What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. So, um, halfway through this, which is your coolest around for Jixit. And it's going well, uh, but I'm probably gonna chop it up and change it. <laughs> More of that in a minute. A um, little bit of an interruption today, because this is turned up. This is my shock for Asbo. So, uh, it's only a quick job, so I can get this on, get everything set up and set the sag and blah, blah, blah. And we can go out for a hoon and see what the difference is. Um, let, me, let me show you. Right, so there's the old nasty shock. Um, you can see that all the rubber end stops trashed and blah, 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 blah. It's not very good. The only adjustment you've got is this collar at the top for preload. So, you know, obviously built to a budget. Um... But it's, it's not great because as you increase the preload on this, you're storing more energy in the spring. So as you, as you, you know, it takes more effort to crush it um, and it springs back quicker and stuff like that. So you haven't really got control over everything. Whereas this is a shower unit. Um, so we've obviously got um, reservoir up here, it's gas filled. Uh, so there's gas, there's big gas and oil in here. Collar down the bottom here, which you can use to ramp this up and down to change the preload. But then you've also got a rebound adjuster and a compression adjuster up here as well. So as you change the tension that you put in the spring, you can change the damping to fix it all. Um, so, you know, it's still all controlled and everything else. Um, we are gonna need to chop a little bit out because of this reservoir. Um, there's uh, a battery tray that's got one edge of it is really really long and it sticks down um, and apparently we've got to chop a, a little bit of that flap out to be able to get the reservoir in but other than that it's pretty much an easy swap no worries there at all um, hopefully this is going to fix some of the handling issues because at the minute it's not great all right let's see if we can get a light in it to see what's what um, I've disconnected the dog bones from the swing arm just so I can get the swing arm down a little bit further. Um, this is just like a protective flappy thing to keep the crap off the back wheel. And then you've got this part of the battery tray. Um, so can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. So this is just, it's only on three sides. And it's just like a bit of a splash guard really. It's supposed to be bolted in down here, whitch it in. And it's supposed to be bolted in there, whitch it in. <laughs> so I need to shove something in there as well. Um, but because the rear shock has got a reservoir to it, and the suspension linkage is buried up here, you know, the top mount, we need to cut out a big chunk of this to allow for the reservoir to go up. Um, so I'm going to find some bolts and bolt this in here and here, because it should be bolted. Oh, I missed that. Um, and then we'll get the angle grinder out or something and chop a big old, you know, a big gap out of this. There's the suspension linkage there, you know, the, the, the top shock mount. Um, but the reservoir is going to sit right up here. So it needs to go. Right, so I've been trimming away, just using this um, finger sander basically, just because you can go slow and steady. Um, you do have to take a fair amount out of the battery tray, it has to be said, um, but we haven't gone through it. Um, there's still a few little rough edges that need tidying up, but I think we are pretty much there. Um, it's gonna be snug, I know that much. Right, let's... Uh, Carefully shove this in here. Come on. There we go. And we're in. We are in. 
Ah, he's very close. That's about three mil off. Three mil off the bottom of the battery tray. Which is all right, because it's, it's cylindrical and it's going to move up in that arc and there's more daylight behind it. So I think we're going to be all right there. Let's um, shove a top bolt in. Are you lined up? You're not lined up, are you? Come on. Why aren't you going, is it that that you're resting on? Yes, it is. the engine. Is it times like this? I wish I was a gynecologist. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right, actually. I think we're doing all right. Um, I can get to everything that I need to to adjust it, which is cool. Um, the top mount, uh, where the, the shot goes in the middle of like a, a, a bracket, I've had to put a washer either side on the inside of the bracket just because the, the, um, the top mount on the shock is a little bit, a little bit narrower. Um, I had to just keep trimming out the, the, the underside of this battery box until we got the clearance that I wanted. There's a good few mil there just because obviously as the swing arm comes up this is going to rotate slightly. I just want to make sure it's not going to knock on anything. Um, down the bottom here there was a casting flash on the bottom linkage. Real raised up quite a few mil actually, it's quite a shocker. So I had to trim that off because there's like a, a retaining sort of clip with a nubbing on the end of it and that was just just touching i don't want anything touching where it's not supposed to so add the finger file on that and you know sand all that down um but we're in it's nice as well because you can get to everything so the the rebound adjuster down the bottom here there's enough space to get like a c spanner on there that's not an issue that's the rebound that's the compression and you can get to it you can get to all of it which is awesome. So, I'm going to button this up, put everything back on the bike, and then we'll set the sag, and um, we can start playing. But hopefully, this is going to be so much better than it was, I'm hoping. Um, it's not hard to do, it's just a faff, because you have to keep you know, you don't want to take too much material off of anything, be it plastic or whatever. Um, so it's just a case of slow and steady, and that's where all the time goes, basically. So I'll get these nipped up, and we'll talk everything up. And then we are in. Right, so the shock's all in. It's all talked up and buttoned up, looks a treat. Fits really nicely as well, it's dead snug. Dead snug. Um, but I'd rather that than sloppy. <laughs> so anyway, um, well I'm just cleaning the bits and pieces up here and then we'll shove it all back together, have a play and see if we've made any real differences. Um, what am I hoping to get out of this? Well, the old shock is buggered. Like, properly buggered. <laughs> um, might as well give you a clean whilst I'm here. Just, it don't work. It's so slow to react. If you go back and have a look in the earlier videos where we're setting up the sag, you bounce the back end of it. It just takes so long to react and come back again. And there's no adjustment on it at all. And even with the preload wound right up, it's still soft and soggy. 
So basically it's knackered. <laughs> Hence I've gone for this one. Um, what I'm finding is, uh, although I've serviced the front end of this, the forks are shockingly soft as well. So when you come barreling up to a corner, giving it the beans up for a bit of a giggle, you hit the brakes, there's this massive weight transference forward. It's only got two pot stoppies on either side at the front, which ain't amazing. I mean, they work pretty well, but it's not like real vicious braking or anything. But you still get this massive weight transfer. Do all your downshifts and everything else, and then as you come off the, off the brake, and just crack the throttle just to settle the bike down, to then turn in and sort of wind it on as you go through the turn, there's a massive weight transference to the back. <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing this and it's just it's it's not very confidence inspiring especially with crap tires as well they need to get sorted um so it's just like every move you make is just horrible really really is so and the back end of the bike is just collapsing basically so if you're coming out of a turn you give it the beans just because you can. <laughs> Even though there's not a great deal of power in there, you still get that weight transference to the back. And the front starts going light and you can't hold a line coming out of the turn very easily. So you're riding around the limits of the bike. I know it's not a sports bike. I know it's a commuter scoot. And I know you could happily ride it all day and get off it fresh as a daisy and everything else. But what's the point unless when you get off it, you've got bloodshot eyes and bugs in your teeth because you've had a bit of a giggle on the way. So we want to sharpen it up a bit, and that's what I'm doing. Um, so that goes to that side, right? We're in. So that's what I'm hoping to do. We're going to get the back end sorted first, try and stop it collapsing, and then it's just going to show how bad the front end is, and we're going to have to sort out another set of forks for the front. Um, I do know what I want to put on it and what I want to have as the forks on this when it gets turned into a project bike, you know, a full on old school cafe racer. I want to go for a set of Triumph 955 Daytona forks, complete front end basically. They look awesome. They would really be in keeping actually. I'll see if I can find a pick and shove it up, you can see what I mean. Um, but that without a front mud guard on, I reckon would look the business. And you've also got preload, compression, and rebound adjustment because it's like a cartridge fork on the inside. So, any handling troubles that we've got, we stand a chance of correcting by changing the suspension settings. But that's what I want. I think that'll be the choice to make. I really, really do. They're the right length, um, they look really cool. They've got all the adjustability that I would need. Um, just you know, they ain't cheap. <laughs> but um, at the end of the day, I want to build a really cool bike out of this. So I need to prove the suspension is all right. I need to get it all working properly and adjusted right and all the geometry sorted and all that kind of stuff before I pull the whole thing apart and make a frame jig out of it. Because I'm going to make my own frame as well, but it'll be based on this geometry. So all the work I'm doing now, we're getting the suspension sorted and knowing what units I'm going to use and all that other kind of stuff. Still building things for the future, basically. Um, and that way I'll have a really sound basis on which I can build my frames and build the bikes that I'm going to gonna do. And I know that they will handle and you'll be able to adjust it. You know, there'll be the range of adjustment to take it anywhere from a fat fella to a skinny bird. Um, it will work for everybody, so that's what I'm hoping. Right, we're all on, everything's buttoned down, talked up, blah, blah, blah. Looks all right, doesn't it? It is 
a very snug fit. She is just in there, but she just clears everything. Cheeky little reservoir peeking out. I quite like that. <laughs> Yeah. There's bits of plastic all over the floor where I was chopping. <laughs> Come on. Right. Well, it works, it bounces up and down. <laughs> and there's no knocks, which is good. Right. The next thing I need to do then, set the sag. But I'm gonna have to do that tomorrow because I've got to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, such a child. Right, so we set the sag up. I've got 43mm of laden sag in the back. So that's me in all my bike gear, sitting on it, normal riding position. It's, it's basically 43mm, which equates to about a third of the, the total shock travel, which is what you want for road. That's a starting point anyway. Um, as far as the adjuster goes, preload I'm set on three. Still got a sort of damping out. Um, but for now, I just want to see what the ride height is doing. Because this shock is a little bit longer than the stock one. I googled it, said it was exactly the same. It ain't. <laughs> this one's a little bit longer. So we might end up lowering it back down again. Don't know. But if we have this up on these wheels, there you go. Measure it to the same point. 154 mil. So we are basically back to the same point that we was when it had that 20 mil jack up kit on it. So, we are gonna need to, to uh, get another set of dog bones ordered, um, just to put it back. So, a couple of lessons to learn out of this. Don't trust Google. If someone's put some information on the internet and they ain't an official fella, <laughs> don't just it. Um, I didn't think it would be that much of a problem anyway because we always thought we was going to be lowering this a tiny bit anyway. Um, it's not a problem. Um, it just means we're kind of back to where we was to start off with, with those long, uh, shorter dog bones in. I'm going to get another set ordered because I want to put all this back to stock geometry. So I've had a look um, at the, the site where I've got the, the, the standard dog bones in. They do do a lowering kit by 20 mil. That will basically put us back to stock geometry. Only costs like 19 quid or something. So I'm going to order a set of them. They'll be going on it and then it'll all be back to stock geometry and we can really start to lean on it. But for now, I want to go and have a go. <laughs> oh no, I need to do the damping. Right. It ain't far off. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out for a hoon. I'm going to take this with me 
and the C-span. <laughs> or we just have a play as we're going along. Thing is, I ain't gonna be able to get it set right because I know the forks are gonna be spongy. But I'll just adjust it whilst I'm going. Well, not while I'm going. I'll stop and then I'll adjust it and then I'll have another go. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, so I've got no idea if this microphone's going to work. <laughs> Basically, I haven't got a mount for it, so I just duct taped it inside the lid. <laughs> oh, bumpiest road on the planet. More traffic than you could shake a stick at. Yeah, I ain't doing that. This is just why bikes are better. Indicate the last minute. <laughs> right, well it definitely feels like it's more support in the back. Um, just going through some of those low speed turns when you're giving the beans coming out. Um, the back end used to really squat down and that end happening, which is good. Um, it's quite a nice supple ride as well. You know, it's not all spongy, you're starting to feel what's going on, which is nice. Um, so, I think, to start off with, we're off to a good start. Loving the, going back to the stock gear as well. You're just not tap dancing all over the gear shift all the time. Sounds all right, doesn't it? We're going to go to the Salt House Tunnel. He's having it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go there first, actually. Um, the tyres on this are not amazing, as you know. The front one is pretty worn out. They're both pretty hard. And uh, as much as I would like to really start leaning on it, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to. Um, it definitely feels better than it did though, definitely. I know it's back to, oh hello, there we go. Um, I know it's back to being slightly jacked up, but it don't feel the same. Um, just because we've got suspension that's working properly on the back, it actually feels really good. Honestly, the road in Plymouth is shocking. So much a limit as a challenge. <laughs> 40 miles an hour you gain.
Nam or This is the Tamar Bridge, built in 1961 by a very clever fella. He's in Bard Blue now. Uh, not that he gets that many jumpers off it, but you know, <laughs> it's high. Uh, just after this, we get the Salt Ash Tunnel. Get out the tram line. There you go. Yeah, the trouble is, it's all speed restricted, which I get, I understand why. When the wind picks up, it rattles through here, something fierce, like properly fierce. Um, train line runs down there. King Billy Yard. Basically, just up there, that's where they got the naval port. So there's our nuclear submarines and battleships and all that sort of stuff in there getting refitted. Yeah. I did say we was going to do Salt Ash Tunnel. But there it is, look. I might have to drop a gear for this bit. <laughs>
me, I knew it would sound good. I knew it. And the best bit is bikes get across the Tamar Bridge for free. Everybody else has got to pay. See the dockyard down there in the distance, you see the cranes. Basically I can see all this from my house. Well I can see bits, I can see the bridge. You do have to sort of lean out of a window though. <laughs> This is deepest, darkest Cornwall. Well, not anymore, because we're over the river. But, you get the point. Right. Oh, bugger, look at this. I need to get back to the shop. Because I've got to get my stuff and go to work. sound good in salt ash tunnel i'll give it that although you might not be able to hear anything um the my microphone this thing um i haven't got any way of sticking it in my lid you know it's not like a it's not even a, a proper gopro so i ain't got a microphone socket to plug anything into so i just ended up duct taping it on the inside of my lid <laughs> it might work i don't know but we shall see um as far as the bike goes um, running really good. Um, I should have warmed it up before I took it off actually. Because um, you, you do know it's got a flat spot, sort of four or five thousand, and she's not been ridden in a week or whatever. So I, I quite like to warm it up before we get going. I didn't today, and it was a little bit that, 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 that you know, when you first start it, two minutes later, it's fine. Um, the gearing. Stock gearing is so much more usable. You're not tap dancing all over the gearbox all the time. So I'm glad we did that. Um, and even though the ride height is now pretty much where it was before when we, we had that um, 20 mil lift kit, the set of dog bones that was originally on it, feels different. Um, the back end is a lot more supported, but it's now showing up how bad the front end is. <laughs> <laughs> which I knew it would do but before when I was going along because um, it's an upright bike you get a lot of wind in your chest and stuff and you do get buffeted and all that was turning in uh, sort of steering inputs but now the back end of the bike is supported a lot more and I did have a tweak with the damping and preload and everything else so much happier it's not all it's not as twitchy as it was or anything um, it's you know it has been raining Still a little bit damp in some places. The tyres are rubbish, so I ain't going to give it the beans and really lean on it. But it definitely feels better. Definitely. Um, under braking, because the, the brake pads is now all bedded in, give it like really hard braking. I went through the twisties up the back here, and there's a couple of really good bits where it's a dead straight and then like a 90, or a dead straight and then a hairpin. <laughs> that was a fun one. Um, go really heavy on the brakes and the front end just falls away from you and the back starts getting a little bit light 
Static sag, we've still got five mil in the back. Laden sag, it's 43 on the back. Um, but the front is just too spongy for it, basically. And like, if you tipped over on a corner and you're accelerating through the corner and it's an uneven road surface, so the bike's doing this, it you do you do feel it through the front and you can feel it's, it's not tracking like the back does. So I do need to sort out some more forks and I think I've set on what I'm gonna get. I reckon those 955 forks would do the job. I reckon they'll be brilliant. But bike is way better than it was. Way, way, way better. And it wasn't that hard to do either. Um, I've ordered up the, the lowering kit. So um, that should be here in a few days. So what I'll do is I'll slap them on the bike. Uh, I probably won't film it or anything. Um, but I'll stick them on the bike and I'll go and give it a hoon. I'll give you an update and tell you what's what. But that basically puts the geometry of the thing back to how it should be as stock. It's just we've got a better rear shock in it. <laughs> so that again is going to change the handling. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll wait and see. Ideally, if I can get it, so all the geometry is as it should be and the suspension is working as it should be and I've got a decent front end on it and everything else and I know that's the wheelbase and this is the swing arm angle and that's the rake and trail and all that other stuff, then I've got the good basis to build a frame jig and that's what I want to do with ASBO when I project it. Um, I'm gonna have to save up for a set of forks because they ain't the cheapest so that's going to be a while but when it happens we'll show you what i've got as i'll get it and then we'll stick it all on and we'll go out and have a proper laugh we get steve out to come along we'll do so i don't know we'll just go and have a hoon basically so that's it that's it for this one um i'm still doing this this is still getting done and i'm back on this again tomorrow i'm probably going to change those bits and i'll explain why <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cut it up and I'm going to change stuff. But um, I want to get this this all cooler surround sorted on Jixit. So that's going to be the next video. Not sure if I get it all done in that one. But that's, I don't know, that's, that's what I'm doing. But anyway, hope you're keeping well. Thank you ever so much for watching. And uh, we'll see you again next time. Later.